Welcome everybody to this session about uh, short-term rental accommodation, Airbnb, um, you know, the, this new generation of creating income for your property. Um, I hope you're all having an awesome Friday. Hello, hello. We'll just wait a few minutes. Hey, David. Hey, Simon. And Nagal, Damien. Hello, hello. Lynx. Um, Fizz. There's a few of you joining today. It seems like there's a lot of interest to talk about short-term rental accommodation. Um, this is a personal story for me. Um, I am working on a property as we speak, and it's the perfect candidate for a short-term rental accommodation. I've got friends and family and clients that have all used uh, short-term rental accommodation. So today, I want to talk to all of you about it as an opportunity, um, some things that you should be mindful of um, and you should be aware of before you do choose to make that decision. Um, and for all of you would-be investors that are thinking about getting into the property market and looking at this as a viable option for you, um, we're going to cover quite a lot today. Hey, Carolina. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. Seems like we've got quite a few people in here. Let's kick off today's session. So, you know, first and foremost, talking about uh, Airbnb, it's, it's an interesting topic because it is now no longer taboo. For a long while now, for a long while, it was considered taboo. Um, you know, for specific buildings, if you have an apartment, they will not allow Airbnb or short-term rental accommodation, depending on the strata that you're involved with. Um, and, you know, even within city codes, it was very restrictive and difficult. It was kind of a gray area. These days, you've got to actually register your property to, um, you've got to register your property in a proper registration service to be a part of this Airbnb environment. So, it's no longer taboo. It's actually an incredibly viable um, investment opportunity. I know people that are making tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of dollars through using short-term rental accommodation. You can make huge, huge returns, heaps of cash by doing this initiative. But, 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 you do need to be careful and it isn't for everybody. Um, you know, it's, it's a particularly interesting topic to cover now because we are in a rising interest rate environment. People are facing, watching their mortgage go from 2%, 3%, 4 5 6 it may get to 6%. And when your mortgage repayments are getting higher, the cost of holding your investment or even your own home keeps on getting higher, a savvy investor may look at this as an opportunity to bring in more income, support their family, support their portfolio, and in some instances, just make really good pocket money. So, you know, when you're thinking about Airbnb, the first thing that I really want to cover is, one, are you allowed to do it for that property? Two, is it a viable market? So if you're looking at at an, at an investment or a property, you want to check the strata, you want to see if you're actually allowed to have short-term rental accommodation in that building. Second thing is, you wanna make sure that it's a viable market, that there are people that want to be a part, uh, that will rent it, that wanna go holidaying in your destination. And the second part to that is, you will be surprised that how many people, how many people will actually rent in locations that you did not anticipate. I'll actually give you a little hot tip right now. There is an excellent, excellent website that if any of you are thinking about Airbnb being a property and you wanna see if there's a market available to you, rather than going straight to Airbnb, what you can do is go to AirDNA, A-I-R-D-N-A, and by jumping on there, you can type in your suburb and it'll actually pop up and show you the statistics on all the properties that have been um, airbnb in that location or being short-term um, rental accommodation. And you can see how much rent is coming in, what the occupancy rate is, what types of properties are available. And it gives you a very good idea on what the potential is for that investment, for your property, for your own home, and what kind of income you can receive. 
So there's a massive allure to Airbnb or short-term rental accommodation. You get massive amounts of rental income. However, the downside is that there are, depending on the property, high occupancy rates or, or high vacancy rates, should I say. Now, the vacancy rate is basically how much time the property is untenanted. So it's important for you as an investor to make sure that if you're going to do this, you want to see how much rent you're going to receive, potential rent. Have a look at what your costs are going to be because the costs are way higher than a a standard property. And then how long is that property going to be untenanted? Because you're going to have different seasons, your summer, your winter. When's your property going to be tenanted for the most amount of time? And when are you going to um, receive the most amount of income and when's it going to be dead? And then making sure you have enough money to service that property whilst it is empty. Now, the other thing that you need to consider with this is unlike just a normal uh, investment property, with Airbnb or short-term rental accommodation, you need to treat it much more like a business. And what I mean by treating it like a business is you've got to be mindful of your suppliers. You need to be mindful of its presentation. You know, you have to buy furniture. You need to furnish the, the property out. You need to make sure that it, when you're taking your photography, when you're writing up the ad, when you're doing your communication strategy, it all makes sense. It all lines up that you're luring in the right tenants to maximize the amount of rent and to minimize the amount of time that it's empty. You need to make sure that it's priced correctly. Um, You need to invest into the service. Make sure that you're doing your videography, that you've got your books um, written out, that you've got all the necessary things in there to support making this the best possible investment it can be. You need to make sure that you're creating a really good experience because you will live and die by the reviews of your property. So as a person going through that experience, it can be very difficult when you first set it all up. There's quite a steep learning curve. And for all of you out there maybe thinking, hey, I can actually just go and get a rental manager. Yes, you can. You can go and get a rental manager. Some of them are very good at their jobs. They are very expensive. They are between 10 and 20%, probably more likely 15%. 15% of the total rent that you receive will go to them as a management fee. Um, And then depending on what you've arranged with cleaning services, doing your laundry and all that other stuff, there are a lot of expenses to running it and then getting other people to do it for you, which is why I say you need to run it like a business because some things you can outsource, some things are better done by yourself. Now, for all of you uh, entrepreneurs and would-be investors, I would encourage you to spend the time that you need to really analyze this investment, use AirDNA, have a look on Airbnb, see what your comparable property is going to be. Think about the experience that you're going to set up for your potential tenants. Who is this property targeted to? Is it for families? Is it going to be for bucks nights? Is it going to be for tourists? Is it corporate accommodation? When you know what your target market's going to be, make sure that the copy, the copy, the, the, the text sings to that person, that the photography matches that target market, that you are pricing it appropriately during the, the peak and then the off season. I say all of this because you will get the best results when you do it yourself. Certainly using a property management company is good because it means there's less for you to do. But when you take away all of the property management fees, the cleaning services and everything else, and then you've got your occupancy rate, you need to be careful to see, well, is this thing um, cash flow positive? And would I just be better off potentially renting the property out in the open market, less headaches, less expenses, less fees? So I've just had a big, big ramble there. I just want to scroll through and see if there's any comments out in, in, in here. And if you do have any questions, now's the time. Um, thoughts on Mao and landlords. Feel like he was onto something. No, that's not much of a question there. Today we're quiet in the comments. There aren't that many questions in here about short-term rental accommodation. We've got hellos, hi, I'm vegan, hey, yeah, that's good to see. Congratulations to you. Um, Look, there's not a lot of comments today. Short and sharp. Um, I hope that you've all got your short bursts 
about short-term rental accommodation. I do want to add one last thing. I do want to say that it is an incredible opportunity. You surely can make a lot of money from it, um, but it isn't for everyone and it won't be in all locations. Thank you, Catalina. Hey, Tyler. Um, Look, we're going to wrap up today's session. Um, I hope you've got something good out of it. If you've got more questions about Airbnb short-term rental accommodation and want to learn more about how you can pump up your cash flows, earn more of a passive income from your investments, feel free to reach out to the wealthy team or myself. Happy to answer all your questions. Otherwise, have an awesome Friday. Have a good weekend. And um, I'll catch you all later.